thousands march for a free Iran in London. Some 3,000 Iranians demonstrated on Saturday in the streets of central London, demanding comprehensive sanctions against the Mullah's regime. Demonstrators urged the listing of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, Ministry of Intelligence and the Office of the Supreme Leader as terrorist entities in the UK, while supporting the Iranian resistance and its president-elect, Mariam Rajavi, and her 10-point plan for the future of Iran. In addition to Iranian opposition figures, British and European dignitaries addressed the crowd. British MP Matthew Offord said, Today our response should be firm, held on the principle that the Revolutionary Guards and the regime of Iran should be held to account for their atrocities. These organisations should be prescribed in their entirety under the Terrorism Act. We should say we want to see regime change in Iran, led by Mariam Rajavi, to achieve a better Iran and a better world order. Iran official defends 1988 massacre of political prisoners. When asked by the state-run Mosalas television about the 1988 massacre, former Iranian justice minister Mustafa Paul Mohammadi said the regime was at war and no one should expect it to follow legal procedures and consider citizens' rights and human rights. The former Justice Minister, who was pivotal in the executions in Tehran, called the MEK, whose supporters and members were the main victims of the mass executions, the worst kind of enemy to the regime. He said, They have destructed our image in the whole world. In the past 40 years, nothing has happened against us that the MEK did not play a direct role in. In 1988, the regime executed more than 30,000 political prisoners after show trials that lasted only a few minutes. Despite this, Paul Mohammadi said that the regime had not settled the score with the MEK. He also expressed regret over not killing prisoners who said they were not with the MEK out of fear of being executed. He said, whoever is with the enemy is the enemy. It's time for settling scores. Iran regime announces plans to restart activities at Iraq nuclear reactor. Ali Akbar Salehi, the head of the Iranian regime's atomic energy organization, says Tehran is planning to restart activities at the Iraq heavy water nuclear reactor, a move not permitted under the 2015 nuclear deal. Iran's ISNA news agency quoted Salehi as making the remarks in a meeting with lawmakers in Tehran on July 28th. Heavy water can be employed in reactors to produce plutonium, a fuel used in nuclear weapons. According to Iranian state TV, Salehi also said the country has enriched a total of 24,000 kilograms of uranium since 2015, far beyond the 300 kilogram stockpile limit of the nuclear deal. China's Iran oil imports plunge as US sanctions bite. China's crude oil imports from Iran sank almost 60% in June from a year earlier, Chinese customs data showed on Saturday, following the end of the waiver on US sanctions at the start of May. Crude shipment from Iran was 855,638 tonnes last month, or 208,205 barrels per day, data from the General Administration of Customs showed. Iran hangs juvenile offender in prison. The Iranian regime hanged a juvenile offender at dawn on Sunday in a prison in the northern province of Mazandaran. According to a human rights group, the 22-year-old man, identified as Taraj Kasemi, had been detained for the past six years in Noor prison. The report said that at the age of 16, Taraj killed a 19-year-old man during a fight. State-run news agencies also covered the execution though they changed the date of the incident and Taraj's age in order to hide the execution of a juvenile offender. 